G'day guys, and today Shorty and I are going to do the review which is between Geelong and Collingwood at the MCG and it was the Pies getting home by 29 points in a pretty comprehensive display and uh, they were just way too strong for us matey all day uh, I can delve into all the little bits and pieces um, once you chuck it back over but uh, yeah they just outran, outwork, outworked us um, all day and uh, it was purely won and lost uh, before the game um, it was all up in the head this game so yeah, Pies is too hard, too strong for longer and um, got the job done. But uh, how'd you see it, mate? You saw a little bit of the game, obviously. Um, just seeing a few little bits here and there at work. How'd, how'd you see it? Yeah, I saw a reasonable amount of it. As much as you can gauge off a muted TV. But yeah, I thought Pies <laughs> mean, of course, it was a bad day for us, that's for sure. It looked like Collingwood certainly came to play, as the old cliche goes. But... They certainly harassed us and really put us under a lot of pressure. And it looked like early that we felt that it was going to come and it was going to happen. Someone else would do it for us. And then by the time it really got to the panic stations and things really had to start ticking over, we did start working a bit harder. Collingwood had all the momentum and it, it's just so hard to wrestle momentum back sometimes. So I felt by the time we really pulled the finger out, and try to take the game on a bit, it was just too late. And, yeah. and really, when we did, we couldn't execute as well as we would have liked anyway. But, I mean, you'll obviously delve deep in a few of the finer points and details of the match, but certainly it's a bit of a, a common trend growing with this current alongside. I mean, we always knew that Collingwood would respond at some point. Now, a response was probably always going to come where they finally produced a decent performance, what is an inconsistent pie side. It's a little frustrating that it comes against us, but you've got to respond to that yourself. When a side comes out and they're switched on, you know, great sides will handle that. And I think we are, we're certainly a good side, that's for sure. Mm, yeah. so until we can tick over to that, yeah, we're a genuine top four side, not just one battling out for the top four, then I think we really got to start putting those sort of sides away from the first bounce and and secondly sort of touching on that trend of this current Geelong era coincided with the re-signing of Chris Scott which you know I'm not going to be calling to sack him after that but I just thought it was a little peculiar to re-sign him so soon when we know Geelong's a very good home and away team there's no questions about that with Chris Scott but what there are questions is Geelong lapsing against lower end clubs which again happened today and our ability to perform in finals. Neither of which Scott has shown that he can attend to. And all of a sudden we seem to be rushing to re-sign him. I didn't see the need to pull the trigger so quickly, but they have anyway. So, look, obviously Dangerwood, <laughs> Dangerfield and Selwood, those two go together quite nicely, as we know. Only 38 touches between them, which would have to be their lowest combined total in a very, very long time. That's not the only reason we lost. It was obviously, as you said before the show, a real mindset thing across the whole group. I thought we really missed Menzel in the forward line. Yeah, for really sure. Really lacked a, another element, and it probably does show how big a thing he is for our forward setup. I know he's just one player, but with him there, he had the different element and dimension. Without him, we really do look quite one dimension with Hawkins and a lack of options so yeah definitely very frustrating um, you know you really do hope that Geelong can find that consistency in their performance and again this was a game we should have won and we didn't it doesn't by any means take away from our excitement of last week we said some good things about Geelong last week and they are playing a better brand of footy I feel today was certainly a lap so I don't feel it takes away anything of the first month. I still feel it's a very capable side, but you really do just have to wonder how greater improvement we have made and whether there's still a couple of those key areas that maybe aren't fully fixed. But we'll have to wait and see. I think it'll be interesting to see how we bounce back next week and even more so in a month's time, whether we look back on this as a real aberration or is something that started a bit of a downward spiral. So we'll have to wait and see, mate. But throw some stats at us, throw some details at us, mate. You were at the game. What did you think? 
Yeah, I wasn't too happy. Your old man was uh, seeing smoke about 10 minutes in. He said, I'm not liking the way we're playing. And, yeah, <laughs> as, as you can just imagine it. Um, and, yeah, I mean, it spoke true, really. They, we start, I mean, we could not have had a better start. Straight out of the centre circle, straight down a clock or two and a goal. Like, you thought, OK, Geelong are on today. But then after that, it was all Collingwood. They just uh, took the game apart and... I don't know what it is. They're just a bogey side that just gets us every time. They've won six of the last eight against the Sox. I believe those are the numbers. It was five of the last seven initially, thereabouts. But they just pressure us every time. They they can be in a form slump, and every time they just come to play and they beat us, no matter what. What's uh, no matter where we are on the ladder. Even in, I'm going to go back to 07, mate. Even the prelim final, they played better footy, and we got just got over the line, which. You know, I'm chuck clutching the straws there. In 2008, best team by a mile, they smashed us by 86 points. So uh, there's just something about Collingwood that we just don't like. I mean, we, you know, good against them in 2011. I'm getting a bit of a history lesson here. But, uh, yeah, look, that they just simply work harder than us. It was about as simple as that. The game was won and lost in the middle. We had about, uh, I think it was two percent of clearances in the first half, and that's just simply not good enough. Uh, Collingwood had about 10, and they just... Got out of the middle so easily. All day, they just had extra numbers around the ball. When they switched it, they just had numbers streaming down the other side. And we just... It felt like they had an extra five players on the ground. That's that's how dominant they looked and how hard they worked. And it was... I mean, you think... I said more on the, fa on the ground or something like that. I mean, you, you think they've just got an extra few players. And it's more so a simple matter of calling it working harder than we were willing to work. That, that's really what the game boiled down to and it was so disappointing watching on just you just want them to man up like like they cut you know your old man was saying they just cut through our zone like like it's easy and our zone relies heavily on our midfield pressure and there was basically none from about 80 percent of the day there was they just once they got off half back and they had numbers back and we didn't switch on to actually man them up their, their loose defenders we thought nah that's all right we'll just leave their loose defenders there and that'll be okay. And then we kick it inside 50 long and high and Collingwood would have three extra back and Hawkins has got a three on one. So there was just so many little coach killers there. Clearances were pretty awful. Collingwood one by one, but they had a lot of dominant clearances and we would have had a lot of you know, scrappy clearances. Um, yeah, we won the tackle count, but you know that, that's because we were second of the footy all day. We were very reactive. Um, the yeah, we talk about the pies. Pies have a great midfield or a, a pretty good midfield, and everyone stood up for them. And not many stood up for us. Probably Duncan was the main one that stood up. That was again another disappointing thing. Um, they were just so much harder at the footy. Whenever we, whenever they got the footy out of out of a stoppage contested area, or whatever, they had time and space, all the time in the world to do whatever they pleased. As soon as we got the footy it was pressure 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 no no way to get get a clean touch and clean bit of play and we, we were forced out on the wings all day we did i can't remember many passages of play where we just brought it through the corridor which is not our natural style and collingwood brought it through the corridor at, uh, at will just uh, very disappointing some of those areas where they just got in behind us a couple of times for solo on mackie and yeah just uh a yeah, very lackluster performance, and it's it's just all too common. I've, I've seen it. <laughs> it was like watching the prelim final again. I hate to bring it up, but and just being beaten in the same ways every time we lose, and against teams that shouldn't be beating us. They're a side that's struggling immensely, and coach under the fire. And Buckley's going to look like an absolute hero after beating Geelong. But the fact of the matter is, they just play well against us and really show up and. They get us every time. So, uh, yeah, I guess those are some of the finer points out of the game. And uh, yeah, it wasn't much positive to take out of it, really. So, yeah, I mean, as you said, it doesn't take away from the month we've had. And I'd like to say it's the loss we need to have. But against the same opposition that beats us the same way and the same way we often lose in this manner, it's, um, yeah, it's a little bit too common for my liking. But we'll go to the well and... See how we go next week against the Suns, but um, yeah, not a very good effort today from the guys. Yeah, no, we were all disappointing stuff. 
I guess we'll go into the votes. I'll just quickly run through them. It was hard to pick him, and you'll just agree with me. So, um, three votes to Duncan. He got the 27 touches, nine marks, and four tackles, and kicked a nice goal as well. He just works really hard, and I've really liked his development. He's um, sort of stepped it up a bit and used the ball reasonably well in what was a tough day at the office for the midfielders. It's just funny. We have such a good midfield group, but <laughs> they got absolutely slaughtered by the midfield. Just um, amazing. But anyway, um, I'll give the two votes to... It's between Parfit and Tui. I'm going to go Tui for the two votes, even though I don't really agree with it. He got 36 touches, 8 marks, and got a tackle. He did well off half back and what was a you know, tough day of the office for the defenders as well. And yeah, he finally gets a few votes for some really good work and yeah, did, did well today. And I'm giving the one vote to Parfit. He's actually right at the bottom of the list with um, 14 touches and then took a mark and kicked a goal. It's very rare to pick a player right down the bottom. Got injured with the hamstring, which looks pretty bad, mate, which you might um, talk about in the chopping block section. Uh, it was just really composed today and gave it a real red-hot crack. He didn't get a tackle <laughs> next to his name, but just when he got the footy, he was really composed with it. And when I look at the list of other players, I couldn't really say, oh, yeah, you were good. And lots of uh, very average numbers and, yeah, nothing too outstanding. So Parfit, based on pure effort and poise, kicked a crucial goal, which didn't end up amounting to much. But, yeah, happy with his performance, I guess. And... He could uh, see a bit of a stint on the sidelines with that injury, and yeah, hopefully it's not too bad, but it doesn't look good. Uh, sounds good to me, mate. We'll just uh, double those votes up. I probably didn't get a good enough grasp on the game to cast votes. Duncan certainly stood out to me, but other than that, you know, yeah. Wasn't much. Too tough for me to pick votes and to go on to Cardi Bollard, so we'll go for yours. <laughs> Yeah, well, mine are all done, so um, we'll go into the chopping block, mate. Yeah, sure thing, mate. So, obviously, yeah, you said Parfit did look pretty nasty. I mean, when you can't physically walk off the ground from a hammy, you really feel like that can be a really bad one and an extended period. So, hopefully not, but I think it'll definitely be at least a month. And I wouldn't be surprised if it's more than six weeks, but... We'll uh, cross our fingers and see what happens there, which is a big out because he's been one of the shining lights and one of the players that you can say he has added to our group that wasn't there last year. So it's disappointing. Mm, sure. um, no, I know Reece Stanley was impressive in the VFL, so he certainly pushed his case there. And probably, guys, to look at dropping, again, you'd probably have a better call on that, but... There did seem to be a number of players that were down, but I wouldn't expect too many to be axed. I mean, I would think that they would keep a somewhat similar lineup. Parsons will be available. Whether he comes straight back in, maybe Buse would probably be one who's always on that brink. Mm. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see. I wouldn't expect they throw the axe too heavily or make. A mass amount of changes. Obviously, Menzel will come back to the side as well, as long as it's nothing more than just being rested. Yeah, I hope so. so you never quite know with Menzel. Yeah, you don't do. Yeah, but so probably a few necessary changes. Obviously, Menzel in, pass it out will be one. Otherwise, we're just going to have to see. But you know, unless uh, you want to add anything to that. Um, yeah, well, yeah, it's probably. A, I mean, you're not going to drop guys. I was absolutely awful off the back of one poor performance. <laughs> you would think they would allow these guys to bounce back and show what they've got in response. Mm. Yeah, I'm just looking through now. Um, yeah, maybe Lang wasn't great. I would, I'd probably drop Smith and get put in Stanley. Stanley's in good form. Smith offers nothing around the ground. Um, yeah. Yeah, he really just sort of doesn't give you much. He can't mark the footy which doesn't really help, and he doesn't really hit the scoreboard, and he doesn't really do well on the ruck. So uh, I was chatting with the old man, and he was sort of saying, you know, even if Stanley plays a centre-half forward role, give him, a, give him a crack there. I mean, what's the harm in trying that out? And, you know, he sort of uh, pinch hits in the ruck or secondary ruckman, whatever you like, I suppose. Yeah, probably. Yeah. I mean, I think that's a good point. I mean, 
I mean, the problem is we've got two C grade ruckmen, don't we? I mean, they're <laughs> yeah. your average okay ruckman, the both of them both have different strengths and weaknesses, but we don't actually have a good ruckman. So, yeah, well, uh, it's always horses for courses with them. The fact is, they're just average run of the mill ruckman who will be beaten by the best. Yeah. and will provide a reasonable performance against decent Ruckman. So, yeah, yeah it's frustrating, but anyway. I haven't had a good Ruckman in six years, so... Oh, yeah, that, yeah. Maybe at some point. You know, Gold Coast would be interesting. I mean, I wouldn't have thought they'd be easy, especially up there. So, I mean, we can take a bit of a look at that as well, if you like, mate. I think, what's that on the Saturday night, is it? Yeah, mate, it's Saturday night. We've got the Suns at Mitricon Stadium up there, so it'll be a pretty tough game, and they were quite impressed against North Melbourne just going down. And Gary Ablett back in a bit of form, mate, with uh, 45 and 27 contested, which you absolutely would have loved. Yep. <laughs> yeah, well, gee, I haven't really thought about this game too much. I've been mean, more so sort of uh, retrospectively looking at the Pies game. Uh, yeah, I, I honestly couldn't pick anyone right now. I mean, my, mm, yeah, look, off face value, I, I might go towards the Suns based off their ability to be able to run and carry the footy. <laughs> and it's a really simple way of looking at it. We can be a little bit, uh, a bit flaky away from home as well. Wasn't a great game up there last time. I think it was 2015 when we uh, made the trip up there. They're, they're not a great side. But we're not amazing against uh, lower opposition as well. So, look, I'll face value. I'll, I'll, I'll pick the Suns, but I'll, I'll need to um, have a bit of a think about it if you want me to pick someone. But, yeah, look, we're the better team, but I think it really matters how we show up and the mindset. I don't think it really, as I've, I've sort of said it a lot, it's about how we show up for the game mentally because we've got the skill to be a top four side. So it's just a matter of that mental aptitude and application against any team on any given day, really. But right now, I think yeah. the, I think Gold Coast are travelling better than at least they were in the first two weeks. I think away from home, you know, I can't, <laughs> I don't know, I can't see us losing two in a row, but it certainly wouldn't be easy going over there. I wouldn't go over there confidently, I'll put it that way. How do, how do you see yeah. it? Oh, it's always tough to travel, isn't it? And probably underlines the closeness of the competition too, like today as well. You know, you only got to be 10% off and all of a sudden a perceived bad team knocks off a perceived good team. But, you know, as you said, it does depend a lot on how we rock up, as it does with every club. But I think I'm not absolutely changing my churn just off today's game. I mean, I would be disappointed obviously but it doesn't change my tune I'll be watching even more intently over the next three or four weeks because I think yeah. you know we got a good block of games judge my fat in the first month all of a sudden the start to the next block of four we might have a different outlook but I'd like to see a bit more footy before I start getting super concerned but I, I mean I'd don't head over confident, but you certainly expect to win. I mean, Gold Coast aren't a good team. I mean, they were beaten by North Melbourne, who is another team that's not much chop. I mean, they're two OK sides on their day, but they're not great teams at all by any stretch of the imagination. And Gold Coast in particular, I think, are a real, I guess, Jekyll and Hyde side. You just never really know what you're going to get from them. So, <laughs> we're a hard team to tip. I mean, I go... They're expecting to win, no questions about it. I mean, if we're a serious threat, then we'll win this game. There's no doubt about it. I guess you could argue that point. If we're a serious threat, we would have won today. But I do feel like next week, how we come back is just as important, as we often say. Yeah, so the response. I'll certainly be watching that one intently. And, you know, while I'm disappointed now, there's no panic button being pressed. If we were to be talking at this stage next week about a loss, I would be definitely hitting the panic button. So <laughs> um, we'll um, wait and see what we produce, mate. But I think um, we should be expecting victory if we're the team we think we are. Yeah, we'll find out uh, next Saturday night, won't we? <laughs> yes, we will, mate. <laughs> we will. I'll, I'll be able to have a 
Looking at one too, which would be good. Yeah, is it on Foxtel? Uh, I'm not sure. I don't know. You got? I'm not sure. Well, it probably would be actually come to see. I mean, got the dogs and singing. Game than that on <laughs> somewhere else. Yeah, uh, the dogs in Richmond never ever play on Fox Footy, so uh, they'll yeah. be on seven. You'd imagine. So either way, I've yeah. got the old Foxtel uh, go or play or whatever it is. <laughs> yeah, should be all right. Right. Beautiful, mate. Um, good review today. It was in a tough day for the Cats. Yeah, no, nicely done, mate. Hopefully, we'll be speaking about a win in a week's time. Yeah, hopefully, I'll change my tip and my tune. So, <laughs> yeah, that's the uh, review, guys, uh, with Jordy and myself. The Pies getting home by 29 points. And, um, yep, did tip the Pies this week. So, yeah, I can just toot my own horn there. How good am I tipping? Woo woo. But, um, <laughs> Yeah, disappointing result for the Cats, and hopefully they can just bounce back next week, go to the well, and uh, have a chat to Stephen Wells and see how we go, and just you know, get a bit of uh, continuity happening, just get a bit of intensity. I mean, if we bring intensity and in our best footy, we can beat nearly anyone, so that's that's the, uh, yeah, it's, footy's a very fine line sometimes, so, along with sport, but... Yeah, I suppose thanks for joining in today, guys, and what has been a pretty salty review, um, <laughs> myself and Shorty. But uh, no, passionate fans who just want to see us do well and get the job done, but couldn't get the job done today. So hopefully get a win next week, and uh, feel free to subscribe for more content. Don't forget to give the video a like and share it around for your mates as well to see what went wrong with the Cats this week and comment any uh, thoughts you had out of the game, any and a bit of analysis you had and whatnot to um, yeah, compliment what we've just said. So thanks heaps for joining today, guys, and thanks for joining today, mate. Love your work. Thanks so much, mate. Good stuff. Awesome. Thanks for joining again, guys. I'll catch you next time.